Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Right then, what you're seeing on the screen here is an Oxford MIG Maker 200 compact MIG. Now, this is from Arkwright and it's a MIG welder, but what I'm going to um, bring your attention to is certain details that you need to look at when you're buying a MIG welder. One of these is a duty cycle, which in the details you should see that. So you have duty cycle of 35% at 130 amps and duty cycle cycle of 60% at 100 amps. There should always be an electrical information plate on the welder and you can see one up here. I'm just cleaning this off because this is really dusty. It's a hard working machine. So up here this DC uh, symbol will show us that we're actually welding with a DC current. So DC or direct current is this symbol and alternating current is this symbol. Oh, I'm pretty confident that you know the difference so I don't need to explain it. However, if you look at the plate here, you have AC, which is your input from the wall, for instance, and DC at your torch. Right, also on this plate here, you'll see the DC sign. And our little one here, I'm just going to show you, this is the information I want to show you. X, which is 40%, uh, 60 and 100%. Now, these, this is what is marked as the duty cycle. Some machines will actually say that duty cycle on them. This is a picture of a bicycle and it's not a duty cycle and not to be confused with a station bike either. The duty cycle of a welder, basically it's there to tell you how long it can weld at full amperage until it needs to cool down. This is calculated over a 10 minute period, so basically what they work out if you say have a 200 amp welder, they calculate it over a 10 minute period how long it can weld at 200 amps for instance. So you're given the for example 25% duty cycle of 10 minutes welding at full amperage. This then is basically quarter of 10 minutes so that works out at 2.5 minutes at full power and then you have to give it 7.5 minutes of idle. Of course, two and a half minutes of welding is actually uh, quite a long time. Um, but with Manu Metal Arc, of course, you get time to clean up, you let the welder cool down, and then carry on. So basically, what this does is show the inefficiency of the welder at the highest amps. But of course, as the if you turn your amperage down, the duty cycle then increases, so you get more percentage of a time welding with the machine without it needing to cool down. The little honey we have here, which is the XTT202P, now this weighs in at nearly 1,200 pounds. Also has a lot of facilities on it, but it's for light industrial uh, usage and maintenance and repair. Basically, this does TIG as well as stick welding. A nice little Mighty MIG here, which is 100 amp. This has a thermal overload facility on it, and it will cut out when it exceeds its duty cycle, and it does that quite quickly. So going back to our plate here, this gives you a 40% duty cycle at 190 amps, which is a maximum for the welder, 60% duty cycle at 155 amps, and 100% duty cycle at 100 amps, so you can continuously weld at 100 amps or below. And the duty cycle on this is high because it's a three-phase welder, and it is basically for workshop use only. You won't get this in a domestic situation unless you do have three-phase in your house. This welder welds all day long, and it's had quite a lot of abuse, but it's expensive. So basically now, okay, you know about AC and DC. There's DC one here. You can see what the uh, duty cycle is. And then on the plate next to it is AC, which will tell you again what the duty cycle is for the amperage uh, welding on AC. So it's pretty obvious that this welder is uh, for AC DC, which is an inverter, which means you can do a TIG and you can do your AC and DC stick welding as well. What I need to make you aware of is um, the DIY range or the, the cheaper range of uh, welders. I'm not saying they're bad welders, but what you have is for light duties, you can see here at 160 amps, that's a 20% duty cycle. But when you step up to a three phase 400 amp welders, which cost a considerable amount more, then you are looking at getting your duty cycle up much higher. Now, 400 amp uh, at 60% duty cycle is actually quite respectable. But you'd be expecting to weld all day, every day, and this is for industrial manufacturing and metal fabrication. 
I've got to admit that I was quite lucky when I got this machine. This seems to be a one-off because it has an extremely good dewy cycle on it. And at 130 amps, I can weld for, for quite a long time. Other machines like this have a very low duty cycle, and you've got to watch this when you're looking at cheap machines. This one is reasonably priced, and you can take it to 130 amps, that's 5 mil steel plate, and you can comfortably weld and uh, char up a few rods, lay down some slugs, and then let it cool off. It's not too much of a problem, and for the cost, it's not too bad. Please don't ask me for advice which the best welder is to buy because it is down to personal choice. You could either weld with MIG or you could weld with stick and I hope through this series that you'll understand the differences and then you can go out and, and choose the welder that is most suited to your needs. Just remembering it depends on the metal you're going to weld, the thickness of it, the power supply that you've got and how much welding you're actually going to do on your project vehicle.